All right. Anybody want to add anything to the to the agenda? And you can do that at any point in the call, of course. But anything else to highlight up front? Um, I was just going to uh, introduce myself to the group. I think some of you may have seen um, some messages from me on Gitter and uh, some interest that I have in trying to contribute um, essentially the pipeline graph view from Blue Ocean back into Classic uh, in, in a way that uh, we can leverage that visualization there. So if uh, can definitely talk about it at the end. Uh, I'm sorry, new first time joining uh, the SIG, so a little uh, getting used to the to the process here. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome very much, Cliff. Um, and thanks. Yeah, more than happy to chat about that um, today or at any point in the future. But but yeah, absolutely welcome. We have a small group today, but uh, we're trying to grow this SIG, and and uh, we're excited to have you. Uh, thanks, Felix, for adding that. Cool. Well, uh, with that introduction, let's hop into our first our first item here. So, uh, so this... yeah, uh, wait a second. So, would you like to add any any item to the to, the, to today's agenda? I'm sorry. Was that a question for me? Yeah. Is there any item or topic you would like to add, add to today's agenda? Um. Honestly, I would say probably not um, yet. Uh, I just kind of wanted to sit in and introduce myself. I think um, I probably have some time to like maybe put together a PR and some experimentation. And I think maybe mm -hmm. once I reach that point, then maybe it'd be a good time for us to to talk. And unless folks want to just generally chat about um, you know backporting Blue Ocean stuff into in, into into UX, but kind of de defer to y'all who uh, who've been on the, the call before. Okay, it's nice having you here. We appreciate any. We welcome everybody willing to contribute. Yeah, absolutely. We should pull Thor in. Awesome. Well, feel free to add stuff, but yeah, no pressure. And if you want to share in the next call, sounds great. Uh, we keep this we keep this open, so you can always add stuff even before the schedule is created uh, for the next one. You could just create it if you want to. Um, cool. Without further ado, jumping into this looks like our only item for today, uh, seeking feedback on this concept for design guidelines. So something that we as a SIG, and we're missing a good number of people today, but something that we as a group have talked about in the past is uh, gathering up a lot of the uh, baseline styles and resources that we've shared and looked at together and discussed and iterated upon through this SIG, uh, stuff like the color palette and other design um, artifacts and, and guidelines that have been generated throughout the past few months um, or throughout the past year, I should say. Um, having those in one central place and having that sort of resource, I was thinking about this throughout the past couple of weeks and um, also thinking about how the current state of this particular SIG is that we have resources kind of distributed around the web, which is not inherently bad, but I thought it would be really nice if we could have everything kind of brought into one collective place and, and have a, a bit more order to how we run this group potentially. And then also having a bit more of a central location for those design resources. Uh, so I created a very simple site here. Um, this is uh, temporarily live, but I can take it offline in a moment's notice and there's nothing, nothing none of us have seen here before really. What this is is an attempt to kind of gather all of our different resources into one place. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, so what this is, essentially, you get it, Jenkins User Experience SIG overview. Uh, these are all things that, that most of us know, but Cliff, this would be really uh, valuable for you to poke around as well. More about the SIG, who we are, what we do. This sort of information kind of lives at the beginning of our, our design decks that we usually review, um, but that can be a bit inaccessible for people too. There are a number of different resources here. Um, Dedicated Gitter space is just our channel, and uh, it's just pointing people in that direction, essentially. Uh, but the real uh, meat and potatoes here is the UI design guidelines, where I've created these pages, um, and kind of gave an overview of the, the idea of these guidelines, and created these pages of pages of Jenkins design principles, the typography and fonts, the color palettes. If we look at just one of these, color palettes and methodology, these are all the things basically that we've looked at um, in this group. 
but they have not been easily made available to everyone. So the idea here is bring it all together. Uh, you kind of get the idea. Uh, this is just a, a resource consolidation, uh, but actually I should point out one additional item here is that each of these pages would have at the bottom uh, this very simple type form uh, where people can go and submit feedback. And the idea being that the, uh, the SIG group can ideally grow a little bit and also benefit from more asynchronous uh, feedback and communication this way. Um, perhaps I can gear this up so that when someone submits it, it gets posted to Gitter channel or something like that. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, so I'll stop there and, and kind of get your first impressions. What does everyone think of this as a resource? Where this lives, does this feel appropriate? Anyone have any feedback? My first thinking is that it should land in, uh, especially as we are mostly debriggating the wiki, the wiki uh, on Jenkins IO, you know, probably landing and under the Jenkins IO SIG UX website. Uh, as, I, as I posted the link off uh, in, in the chat, probably would make sense. Yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure what the others SIG do in general, you know, with regard to how to put their resources. Uh, I mean, it would probably make sense to, you know, as you've done here, I think actually we'll eat already overlaps with some of the things because I'm pretty sure we already have the meeting calendar, uh, some of the link to various mailing lists. So yeah, it would probably just add, you know, the, um, I don't know, the design check archive and then, you know, the, basically the things that we've not put there yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm fighting with my baby. <laughs> No worries. Yeah, that does make sense. Felix, I think you had expressed the same sentiment earlier. Um, I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, please. I th no, I think the same. I think uh, Jenkins.io is a single so sole repository of knowledge about Jenkins and its documentation, and this belongs there. This okay. should belong there, in my opinion, of course. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. There's a bit of a barrier to entry for me. I'm not actually even sure where to start uh, contributing to the site. I can find out. Uh, I'll connect with a couple of you to to get started on that. But um, if we can, yep. in, a, in a realistic timeline, get it's actually these very sort of easy to contribute. Up. It's quite Great. easy to contribute because it's actually backed by a, it's a statically generated website. Uh, I think it's. Struct. I'm not sure which which uh, tool it's using, but basically, I've, I've just posted the link off. It's back backed by a, and you can submit a PR, uh, so we can help if if you you're not comfortable with that. But then the rest is mostly you know uh, potentially reworking things in ASCII docs, but I don't think it would be a problem for you. And you know basically posting links and whatever I I just saw a few seconds ago. And there's obviously, by definition, a lot of examples uh, in that thing. And you can run it locally for your filing your PR. So yeah, uh, I think it should be e easy or at least doable for a lot of contributors out there. Um, so yeah, and maybe you can open the links for uh, that I posted in the chat, especially for people who may be watching the recording afterwards and uh, may not have access to the, the comments uh, so that you know it's helping for contribu potential contributors. Sure. Basically, yeah, this is where uh, somebody could, so someone could file a PR, and once the PR is just merged, it's immediately going to be uh, published. Well, immediately after a few seconds or minutes after it's basically rebuilt, but pushed against the, the public facing Jenkins.io website. Sure. Yeah, the, the majority of my time spent on this certainly was about uh, making the, the content here and less about putting it exactly. on this structure. So, yeah, if we can. It uh, sounds like we can uh, get it yep. over there onto Jenkins.io in a way that's useful and super visible in the current destination. I'm totally fine with that. So, Baptiste, I'll, I'll follow up with you about where to get started with that. Um, sure. Uh, Pleasure. Okay. Um, so, then, yeah, in, in coming weeks, I can't promise a specific time, but in coming weeks, we'll, we'll look to consolidate all of this stuff and, and have it a little bit neater and have these resources a lot more visible, hopefully. All right. That's the only item on our list for today. Anyone want to talk about it further or anything else? Short week, small week, or small meeting? Yeah, I'm, I'm 
literally ecstatic about what uh, Cliff and Felix and, and many others could be delivering together. <laughs> uh, because I think what Cliff, you were saying, some, correct me if I'm wrong, but, and I think Felix did it, give it, gave it a try, quick, quick try, uh, is to, you know, find some way to extract basically the kind of pipeline, pipeline rendering capabilities of Blue Ocean inside uh, so-called classic UI. That would be an awesome freaking thing because that's basically what people are missing and that's where basically uh, the classic UI is crap. Uh, anything, any pipeline using any parallel step is just exponentially crappier than one that, that one Blue Ocean can offer, so yeah. Yeah, I, I did try to just uh, taking Blue Ocean code and putting it into, yeah, and creating a, a plugin or just, you know, creating a React app and embed it into the classic UI and using Blue Ocean code. And thing is the Blue Ocean UI code, it's really tightly coupled to the JavaScript code, to the business logic, which is tightly coupled to some REST API. And the authentication is weird. I could, I couldn't, I wasn't able to get anything to work after release, so I, I sort of gave up on that one. So my suggestion would be to, if anyone wants to work on this, to just use the Ocean API and maybe build the whole thing from the <laughs> from the ground, <laughs> because understanding the way Blue Ocean works, uh, the they have a, the the API, the stream model, and everything. It's a challenge. I would just go with the API and start building something. Yeah, maybe that's not that's something Cliff can uh, co talk to talk about. But yeah, I'm I'm like it. It looks to me as a newbie, you know, uh, outsider, that the you know the rendering of pipelines is not is more than just API code. It's a lot of work. So uh, if you're saying we rewrite everything about that, I'm like probably going to take a lot of work and a lot of rework and basically mm. re re rewriting from scratch. So maybe I'm missing you something can, or you can sort of with 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 some especially React uh, knowledge, you can sort of copy and paste. You can just go into this component boom, copy and paste the SVG code, which is basically what you're referring to, the SVG code. You can just copy and paste that one and migrate it into any other JavaScript framework because uh, that's the basic. It's the, the, the difficult part is the other one, basically. And it's the one that's really difficult to, to extract from Blue Ocean. Even though there are many JavaScript packages, there is a Blue Ocean Core JS, Blue Ocean Web Dashboard. There are many things that I couldn't, I wasn't able to make anything to work, to get anything to work. Yeah, I'll uh, uh, kind of reintroduce myself a little bit in a little bit more detail. So, so I'm actually a, a former B uh, myself. Um, I worked for Cloud Bees um, kind of during like 2016, 2017 timeframe. I guess you could say I was maybe one of the, the principal contributors uh, to the Blue Ocean UI. I did a little bit on the back end with <clears throat> building out like some of the GitHub integration um, REST mm -hmm. APIs over there. So although it's been, you know, it's been a few years since I really thought about, you know, doing Jenkins development, um, uh, I think I can probably find my way back through the JavaScript code, uh, at least pretty, uh, uh, pr pretty easily. Um, Right. And, and and it's fair to say that it is, <laughs> I mean, what we're trying to do is ambitious and, and probably too ambitious. And that, that's probably where the, 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 the project has kind of landed in the, in the state there where it is now, unfortunately, as being kind of EOL and, and not having great uh, community adoption. But um, yeah, Felix, to your point, I think um, we should be able to scrape um, essentially the React-based code, or at least the SVG-based code. Um, I'd probably start just with scraping the React code, trying to get React bundled into the thing. And then what I probably do is mm -hmm. just like go to a Jenkins instance that I have somewhere um, and grab essentially just the REST API response payload um, that I know is responsible for kind of rendering that graph and just start there and just see if I can slam literally like some some object literal JSON into the React component and just get it get it to render. Um, and then at least we kind of got to that point, we know, okay, well, like the UI piece at least is kind of works and, and is solved and then it's more about kind of like how do we rip out what we potentially need from the, yeah. the blue ocean rest api and then and then maybe that Definitely. whole thing is 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 packaged as a as a single plugin um that exposes the the api endpoint that the graph needs to consume is that would that be kind of in line with your thinking of how to approach it i yeah definitely uh 
The actual UI part is, is spread ac across several packages. I think it's spread across the, well, uh, you'll see. Yeah, I remember. You, you need I to do this. several, I, I, I need to do some comprehensive GitHub search. Uh, but yeah, I think that, that, that's sort of the approach I took as well. So yeah, definitely. Uh, an issue I had was authentication with the Blue Ocean API. But uh, if, I mean, if you work on that, you'll probably know. I came in with knowing nothing, so. Yeah, I know that at one point there was some work that um, Vivek Pandey was doing with like a JWT implementation and I can't for the life of me recall if we ever shipped that and finished that and actually integrated that on the UI side or if that was something that was uh, that was in, in progress. It's kind of like I think the JSON structure, I believe they call them well, I know they're called, you know, pipeline graph nodes, um, kind of within Jenkins. Um, but I know there was like, there's that piece of the REST API and the object model. Um, and I think what will be interesting is, you know, it's like when we try to grab that piece and pull it out, how many other pieces want to come along for the ride? <laughs> um, because obviously there's like a ton of, as to your point, like Vivek did a ton of work building like essentially a whole new REST API uh, framework almost from, from the ground up. So um, it may may have a lot of dependencies that we need to try to untangle um, as, as we get to that part, so. Yeah. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. It sounds like you know way more than I do about that thing, so great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's been uh, been about three years uh, since I thought about it. But um, yeah, I actually work um, over at Capital One now and uh, do a lot of work um, kind of over in the, well, I do kind of a little bit of everything, mostly uh, UI architecture and a lot of CI, CD and, and delivery stuff. And um, mm -hmm. we actually have a Jenkins master that is so massive and has so many branches and pull requests because we, we have like a repo. We have like 300 developers uh, contributing to on like a monthly basis. So we have like mm -hmm. 15,000 pull requests in like the last year or something. It's like super active. And we actually got to the point where we can't reliably even get the Blue Ocean U UI to load. It like basically times out after 60 seconds uh, because of some, you know, proxy, you know, firewall set up in our organization. Um, so we've had to kind of shift all of our users uh, back into the, the conventional UI. And, and of course the, the pipeline graph is like the one thing that they're, that they're missing. So um, excited to do some open source contribution again, definitely. Um, but this will also kind of help us out big time at uh, the day job uh, as it were, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you Cliff for bringing it. And I thank you for sharing. Uh, look forward to it, yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you all, thanks. Yeah. Anyone else got anything? And if not, we'll we'll uh, call it for the day. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk in a couple of weeks and on Gitter. Okay. Bye. Right. See you. Bye. See you, everybody. <laughs>